This property, Winona, is, is about 20 kilometres from north of Golgong. Uh, granite soil, so it's not, not highly fertile soil. There's 2,000 acres on this property and we run primarily merino sheep for wool, um, but also crop about a quarter of it with wheat, oats, barley, those species, but mostly now we're growing oats. In 1979, we had a major bushfire, which burnt everything, burnt 3,000, killed 3,000 sheep, all the buildings um, on it and most of the fencing. So we went from going okay financially to be broke overnight. So, I, and I was burnt in it as well. So I had to find another way of doing this. We often hear about low input agriculture now, but mine had to be no input agriculture because I had no money at all. In uh, conventional agriculture, what we tend to be doing all the time is using more fertiliser, more pesticides, more insecticides. So really all we're doing there is putting more product on all the time which I love to call the moron principle, because, uh, which is total madness. Uh, it, we can't continue that way. So I started searching for ways to do, of doing this. How we could survive, and that's all it really was, was how we could survive on this farm um, financially. Everything we sow here, all the crops we sow, are all pasture cropped. Pasture cropping is sowing uh, crops primarily in into grasslands that are in a dormant phase. Most of the grasses we have in Australia are summer growing warm season grasses and those grasses go dormant in the winter which is a perfect time to put, plant a crop into them. Livestock, in my case here, sheep are a major component of that in that we're using sheep to mulch the grass onto the soil surface. The sheep uh, deposit a lot of manure and urine onto, those, on, onto that area and then we're planting the crop into that uh, area where the sheep have mulched and manured that, that, that paddock. A friend of mine, Daryl Clough, and I started doing this in 1993. And we originally saw it as, as a, a, a low cost method of producing stock feed. But we found in the first year, and, and I found here in the first year, that, that it worked a lot better than we thought. One of the first things we saw was germination of native grass seed that was in the soil. We didn't sow it, but it was sitting in the soil, dormant, for decades. So we'd stumbled across a way of, of restoring grasslands very, very cheaply. Because we're restoring the grassland and adding a fast-growing annual into that grassland, the cereal crops that we're putting in, into, that, into there produce a lot of sugars or root exudates into the soil. Feed soil microbes and kickstarts the soil ecology. The great benefits from that, that we're seeing very rapid increase in nutrients, not decrease in nutrients, but increase in all soil nutrients um, and a balancing of the soil ecosystem. The nutrients here have increased by an average of 172% on the farm by using these techniques. It is overlaid with, with holistic grazing management, which is also an important component of it. The other amazing benefit is that we've increased carbon levels by, by about 200 percent. Um, water holding capacity has also increased enormously as well. There is one uh, ideal way and probably the only way of removing excess carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere um, is, is storing it in soil and storing it in soil is carbon. Now the only thing, only way we can that we can do this is through plants. As, as we grow more plants, we can certainly t remove more carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and sequester it into the soil as carbon. That does a lot of things. We get more nutrient availability in our soil and also in our food. Everyone wins with this, and especially the farmers win with this. Mm -hmm. And certainly the planet will win with this. We need more ground cover, and we need ground cover all of the time. Um, and we need actively growing plants all of the time. So there's a few, few things we need to do. We need to either restore the grasslands or at least restore the function of the grasslands in that our pastures that we have need to function like grasslands. Then we'll start, start to cycle nutrients, store carbon and have far better quality food. I've certainly been called a lunatic in, that, in those early days, no, no problems at all. And most likely still called a lunatic today. <laughs> but what I've developed here over the last 30 years um, is now being adopted all over the world. Um, a lot of adoption in, in the US. And now, as far as we can estimate, there's about three million acres 
uh, that are pasture cropping uh, are now around the world and about 3,000 individual uh, landholders are, are pasture cropping so there's a big adoption of this. The one thing that most, many people don't realise is that pasture cropping is also perennial cover cropping. There's a big push now, especially in the US, but I, I, I push here also in Australia to grow cover crops. This form of agriculture is actually perennial cover cropping and we can have those perennial grasses here all the time and plant the crops into that cover of, of perennial grasses. There's a big shift now into, for the want of a better word, regenerative agriculture all around the world. Um, and there's been a few of us that have been at it now for probably 30 years and, 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 and been getting a small adoption. That momentum is growing and I think the role of your generation is to really not only continue that, that movement but, but ramp it up because we don't have a lot of time. We need to fix this planet real quick um, because we've just about got it stuffed.